Today, we become legends. Divinity Original Sin 2 can be a tough game at times, even on regular difficulty. Today I bring you 20 essential tips for your journey through Rivalon. From combat tips to help you smash that next boss fight, to money making hacks so you can afford those 25 skill books you obviously need, this video has it all. There also won't be any plot spoilers outside of what you may catch in bits of background gameplay that I use, so if you're a lore freak, don't worry, I got you covered. But let's jump in with tip number one. Tip number one, summons are great for breaking down doors or lockpicking chests if you don't have a character with thievery in your party. Tip number two, if a hard fight is giving you trouble, try doing any buffs, summoning, surface generation or high ground placements before starting the fight to save that all important AP in the early turns. Tip number three, some fights can be cheesed using teleportation. If you find high ground to extend the range of TP, you can often TP one enemy away from the rest putting you in combat with them, but not with the rest of the enemies. You can take them out alone, then do the rest of the fight, or even repeat the process. This is pretty exploitative, and I only do it on Tactician difficulty, as some of the fights on Tactician are close to impossible without some level of game abuse, but it's there if you need it. Tip number four, don't underestimate cutlery, cups, and plates. Many fancy items of crockery in the game sell for a lot to vendors, and you can make some quick cash this way if you need extra for a good piece of gear or a new skill book. Riker's Mansion in Act 2 of the game specifically has loads of golden forks, knives, and spoons, as well as fancy cups that can fetch thousands in total when sold to vendors, even with a low barter skill. Speaking of, tip number five, if you really want to maximize your gameplay at the cost of a little annoyance, save up all your loot, respec your character into max bartering, and sell it all, then respec back to your normal stats. You can respec whenever you want for free as many times as you want in Divinity, so use that to its fullest extent. You can do a similar trick to bypass speech checks, lockpicking tasks, or law mastering items as well. It can be a pain, but it's there if you need it. Tip number six, when playing as an undead character, keep an eye out for empty potion bottles. They're much more common than health potions and can be filled up by combining them with an ooze barrel in crafting to make poison bottles, which of course heal you if you're an undead. This is way cheaper than buying them and much easier than the method of crafting health potions, so make use of it. On a similar note, tip number seven, two potions of the same size can be combined in crafting to make a potion of a larger size. Two smalls makes a regular, two regulars makes a large, etc. This also works for poison bottles. I often find my potions becoming obsolete as my characters get more and more health as I level up, and instead of selling them, I combine them. Tip number eight, get at least one movement skill on every character in your party. This is an incredibly important one. On melee characters, I like to get two or even sometimes three movement skills to get around the fight and keep in my effective range, but even on ranged characters, I like to have at least one movement skill. They're just too important. Not only in combat for positioning purposes, but also in exploration, as many areas with hidden loot are inaccessible other than via movement skills or teleporting. The key movement skills are Phoenix Dive from Warfare, Tactical Retreat from Huntsman, Cloak and Dagger from Scoundrel, Spread Your Wings from Polymorph, and Teleportation slash Nether Swap from Aerothurge. There are others, but those are my go-tos. Tip number nine. Areas in Divinity are zoned by difficulty. If you're having trouble with a fight in a certain area, it's possible you're not really supposed to be there yet, and you should be looking for other quests or fights to do in previous areas first to level up or get better gear. This may seem like a mundane fact, but it's something that I struggled with a lot when I first started. The levels of enemies don't scale to match you. Tip number 10. Use backpacks. You may find inventory management easy in the early portions of the game, when you only have a few potions and a small stack of gold to your name, but later in the story you will find it can get real messy real quick. You're given a backpack at the start of the game, and each party member you pick up also has one, and you can find them throughout the game as well if you need more. These have infinite storage space and should be used to organize your inventory. I myself use one for potions, one for scrolls and grenades, and one for quest items to make sure I don't drop or sell them, but of course, you can organize these how you like. Tip number 11. On the topic, I would recommend keeping any scrolls or grenades you find on your travels instead of selling them. They are worth a decent amount, but can come in handy in many different situations. I build up a grenade and scrolls bag over the course of my playthrough, and by midway through I have a grenade and scroll in my back pocket for almost every situation. It might be a quick tremor grenade to knock down an enemy that was going to kill me, or an armor of frost scroll to survive an incoming fireball, but they're always useful. Scrolls also act independent of your spell cooldown, so even if you have learnt a spell, having a spare scroll of that spell is still very useful. You can cast the spell, then cast the scroll again for double effect. Tip number 12. Hitting objects like chests or doors with a melee weapon will break the weapon fairly quickly, so I would highly recommend using ranged spells, a bow, or a summoned creature to do your dirty work so you don't have to break your favourite new weapon. 
Tip number 13. If you're looking to fill up on source points, there are often places in the game that have infinite source fats where you can get as much as you need before going on a quest. Meister Siva's house in Act 2 is a great example. Tip number 14. Don't overlook runes. I put this one in here specifically because I did this myself for way too long. It took me playing on Tactician to realise that runes can be extremely powerful. Look for the white circle on your gear. This means it has a rune slot. You can simply manage runes and put a rune in there and it'll give you extra benefits. Tip number 15. You can switch quickly between your characters using F1 through 4. Likewise, you can quickly switch between ability bars using R and F. Tip number 16. It's important that you can wear armour of all kinds to make a balanced armour set. Intelligence armour comes with massive magical armour but low physical armour. Strength comes with massive physical armour but low magical armour. And Finesse has a good mix of both. It is often worth putting one or two points into strength even on your mage character so you don't get nuked by physical attacks because you're too heavy into mage armour pieces. And vice versa. Your tanky strength character might look beastly in all plate armour until he dies to two fireballs because you lack any good magical protection. Tip number 16. Be sure to save any water and life essences that you find. Combining one of each with a sheet of paper gives you a res scroll, extremely useful in a pinch. Tip number 18. Don't underestimate the defensive skills, perseverance, leadership and retribution. It may be tempting to whack all your points in pyrokinetic and fireball bitches into next Tuesday, but these three skills are criminally underrated and are another thing I only realised when I started playing on tactician difficulty. Tip number 19. Crowd control is extremely important in Divinity. When an enemy is stunned, knocked down, frozen, etc, they lose an entire turn or sometimes multiple turns. It's important to have CC skills on your character that can lock down enemies that you don't want to have a turn in the fight. But keep in mind that each CC is resisted by a different armour type. To stun an enemy, they need to be out of magical armour, but to knock down an enemy, they need to be out of physical armour. And finally, tip number 20. Anti-crowd control is equally as important as crowd control. Enemies can CC you too, so having skills like Fortify, Magic Shell, Soulmate and Peace of Mind to cure CCs from your allies is basically the equivalent of giving them an extra turn, and most of these skills only cost 1 AP, extremely worth to have in a pinch. But that's 20 useful tips that you can apply to your next Divinity playthrough. If you stuck through to the end, I appreciate that, I know this isn't my typical style of video, so thanks for watching the whole thing, it means a lot. Peace.